Hey folks, welcome to Seattle Coffee Gear. My name is John and today we have a super fun topic we're talking about. We are talking about tamping and distribution. Now before we jump in all the way to that exciting stuff, we need to talk about why this is important. I'm sure this is a burning question in your mind and you might not have even heard the word distribution when it comes to coffee or espresso. So before we talk about that, we need to talk about even extraction. Now I know your first two questions are gonna be, what is extraction and why does it even have to be even? Well basically extraction means that you're taking something out. And when it comes to coffee, you're taking something out of coffee with water. That's what we call extraction. Coffee only has a certain amount of things that are soluble with water. That means that water can dissolve them. And there's only a certain percentage of a range of stuff that you take out of the coffee that actually tastes good. If you take out too much, that will be over extracting. You're gonna get these bitter astringent flavors. Like if you've ever had some black tea that's been steeping for a really, really long time and it feels like your mouth is drying out or a red wine that has a lot of tannin in it and it feels like it's really just drying your mouth out even though you're drinking a liquid, that is what bitterness or astringency tastes like. If you extract too little, that's when you get these flavors that are really sour uh, and tart, very acidic. So our goal is to kind of meet in between those and find something that's really sweet and a balance of those two combinations and also the sweetness, that's the third factor in there. Now that we've talked about extraction a little bit, why don't we jump in and talk about how we can do that well. All right, I'll be right back. All right guys, I have my porta filter here. I know you want to get into tamping, but before we do that, we have a little bit more to cover. Um, there's a lot of info that we just talked about, but now let's talk about distribution because tamping is really only half of the equation when it comes to getting even extraction giving, get, and getting good espresso. So when you're grinding, odds are you're gonna have either a pile in the middle, close to the front, to the side, somewhere, you're gonna have more coffee. And that means that if you just tamp that, that doesn't move that coffee around. That coffee is still where it was, but you just have a higher density. It's a lot more dense coffee up here and less dense coffee back here. So even if you had a perfectly level tamp, the water is gonna go for the path of least resistance and it's gonna go back here where there's less dense coffee. If you think about like a, two buckets of gravel and one is pressed down, and if you think about like concrete or anything that's rolled over, if you were to pour water on each, it's gonna drain through that looser sand or gravel faster. And that's the same concept when it comes to coffee. And we just want the water to be touching all the coffee for the same amount of time or as close to the same amount of time as possible so we can extract the same amount from all the coffee and get an even balanced tasting shot of espresso. Well, how do we go about fixing this uneven distribution? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. So why don't we jump in and talk about a couple of these different ways. The first one is called the Stockfleths move, and it was designed, or it was not designed, it was created by a guy named Tim, Tim Windelbo uh, in the early 2000s or late 90s, I can't remember exactly when. Uh, but basically it involves taking your hand and kind of moving around the porta filter, and I can demonstrate that a little bit right now. So let's grind some coffee. So if you notice, I tried really hard to get, I need to readjust my grinder a little bit, but I tried really hard to get that nice even pile in the center. That's kind of the start of good distribution. But now if I was to just tamp this, like I said before, this pile of coffee isn't gonna magically move around. It's just gonna get compacted where it is and all that water is gonna go to the outside edges and I'm gonna get over extraction out here and under extraction in the center and I'll have a shot that's bitter and sour at the same time. So how that move looks is you take your dominant hand, for me it's my right hand, and you kind of push a little bit of that pile and then spin your finger around until you have covered all of those empty spaces. Now you might have to do this a few times, but you'll end up getting something that looks like this. 
Now this is definitely better than just having a big mound of coffee in the center and tamping that. But in my opinion, you can do a little bit better than this. Um, this is a good method, but I think there are a couple other methods out there that are better. So why don't we go ahead and cover those. So the next method that I want to talk about is something called distribution tools. Those come in the form of things like this. This one is called the OCD, made by Ona Coffee. So this was super popular in the coffee world. You've probably seen these at coffee shops if you go to specialty coffee shops. Um, but basically these things here kind of create a wave-like motion that moves the coffee around to get you an even density so you have even extraction. And how they work is you just set them on top. You don't want it to crush too much of the coffee and then spin it kind of back and forth. So then that way you're creating that wave-like motion and redistributing all that coffee so you get the same density. This looks like it was tamped, but it is in fact not. So if we were to look at this now, you can see by where that ring of coffee was, it's not t it was not tamped before. We still had to add a little bit more to finally compact that all the way. So that's another method. Now, if you're working in a coffee shop or a cafe or something like that, this can really make sense for you because it's super easy to use, really easy to train people to do, because all you have to do is just spin it a couple times, tamp, you're good to go. For the home user, it might not make sense to use something like this because these can be a little bit expensive. That's where this next method comes into play. This is one of my favorite methods. It's the one I use at home when I'm making espresso. Um, it's called tapping. Um, why don't we go ahead and grind some coffee and talk about that. So this method I learned from a guy named Matt Perger uh, from Barista Hustle. Um, it involves taking one hand and tapping the portafilter. You don't want to hold it super tight um, because then you won't get enough, enough movement. Um, you don't want to hold it super loose because then you're going to drop the portafilter. But basically you're going to do two to three taps to try and collapse this and move it around. Um, just try and think about the empty space around the edge here. Um, just try to think about filling that. Don't intentionally try to fill it because you're just going to wind up in trouble there. Just if you can try and shut your brain off and let your hands do the work for you. That's the best way I've found to do it. Um, so you're just going to take it and just give it a couple taps, get something like that. After you do that, you're gonna come over to a nice hard surface. You can use your grinder fork, you can use a counter, you can use a tamping mat, and then just two nice level taps straight down to kind of collapse any extra pockets in there and get rid of anything in there. Um, and it creates this nice even bed. Now, the guys at Brista Hustle actually tested this method and cut the puck into a bunch of different sections that were equal and weighed them all and found out that this method had a similar uh, result to using something like this uh, to get even distribution all the way through to get even density. So now that we've talked about those three different methods, why don't we dive into tamping? So tamping, I know a lot of you have probably heard that you should apply 30 pounds of pressure and you're sitting at home with a scale going, that's 30 pounds. That works, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Really what you're trying to do is just do the exact same thing every time and compress the coffee until uh, when you about, about feel it stop moving. Uh, and you just wanna do that every single time because as a human, there's no way to apply 30 pounds of pressure the exact same every single time. So you just wanna tamp until you feel it stop moving and get that even compression each time. Now that we've talked about pressure, let's talk about the mechanics of it. This is the way that I tamp. This is the way that I taught all my baristas to tamp back in the day. And you're gonna take your tamper, pretend it's a doorknob, except you're gonna point your fingers out like that. Once you have your tamper like that, you're gonna take your portafilter sideways like this. And then what I do is I point my thumb at the handle 
of the portafilter just like that and then your arm is going to go way up into the air you're going to throw your elbows out and you want your bicep to be parallel to the top of the basket now what i mean by that is basically this you're going to think of one line there one line on your bicep and you want those to be parallel to each other now what you're going to do next is take your tamper and after you Think of that being parallel. Make sure you're all good there. You might have to angle this up to help yourself get parallel if you're taller. You're just going to lock in place. And then as soon as you th think you're parallel, you know the song, I'm a little teapot, pour me over and tip me out. Just think about that and lean your body into it. So if you'll notice what I did there, I didn't just use my arm. I'm not just going like that and pressing my arm. I'm using my entire body and that's distributing that force throughout my whole body. So I'm not putting all that pressure on my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder. It's on my whole body. And that way I'm not getting any sort of repetitive stress injury or something like that. Because I've seen people who just use their wrist and put all that pressure on their wrist and their wrist ends up swelling up and just getting really injured. <clears throat> After you tamp, just take a look here and there, usually these baskets will have a ring around that outside edge and what you can do is kind of compare how that looks and you can use that to tell how level you are all the way around. This one's pretty good, it could be a little bit better, that's okay. And then if you want to check for cracks, that would cause channeling where the water is just going to shoot for that crack or that channel. You can just flip it upside down. That's not going to ruin your tamping, your distribution, or anything. But that checks for cracks. <clears throat> now that we did that, let's go ahead and brew this. While that's brewing, I'll give you a couple closing thoughts. So the stuff we've talked about today is not necessarily the only way to do all this. This is stuff that I figured out works well for me in my past and my history as a barista. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but if you're stuck, you can't figure out what's going wrong with your espresso. Try out some of these techniques. See if you can get better tasting shots by doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and keep an eye on this here. That looks good to me. That looks pretty good. Obviously we don't have a bottomless today so we can't really see how that extraction looks in real time. Um, that's another thing you can do if you wanna check your extraction. If you get a bottomless portafilter and if it's shooting out and spraying everywhere, something's going wrong. We'll cover that in another video probably. Um, but yeah, I hope this has been an informative video for you. Please like it, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave those down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.